assert, require and revert. It's now time for us to look at proper ways of fact checking our code and also rectifying and stopping the execution if something goes wrong. And Solidity provides us three amazing methods that we can use to help us secure our code by stopping executions at the right points. These are the require, assert and revert methods. Each one of these methods have a unique way on how it works and can be used at different points in our code. Let's take a look at the revert example. We will be looking at the previous example where we learned about the if else statements. And in this example, we have a function place order, which takes a pizza selection. It can be any uint, and then it requires the user to pay at least one ether to fulfill the order. Else we just simply refund the user or the client the value that they have sent to the contract. Now at this point, I want to use a revert instead and stop the execution altogether. So instead of actually transferring back the value sent to the contract, we're going to use the revert, which will actually send back the ether that was sent and will also undo all the state changes and send back any leftover gas. Let's now get rid of this transfer line and instead use a revert. You start off by typing revert and then in brackets, you can optionally send through a string, a message on why this had to be reverted. In my case, I can maybe say the required payment amount is not met. And that is perfectly fine. You could also omit the string, but I'm going to keep it in for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and deploy the contract and try and place an order with insufficient funds paying for our pizza. I'm going to go ahead and click on deploy. And then over here, doesn't matter what selection I choose. However, for way, I'm simply going to enter an amount that I know is less than one ether. And here I'm going to place the order and we should see that the transaction failed. It actually reverted. So this is essentially what we want. And here we can see in the message, the required amount was not met. And this is how a revert works. It will simply start off by reverting any of the state changes if there were any made and send back the ether if the user sent some ether to the contract and refund the leftover gas. Now reverts are great to use, but in this use case that we have right here, we can actually make use of a require statement. This way, we can stop the execution right here at the top if the user hasn't provided the funds for the pizza. In order to show how the require statement works, I'm going to simply duplicate this function because I want to keep a version of the old code with the revert in place. I'll name this one old and we'll work on this function over here. To make use of the require statement, we can simply put a require anywhere in the code we need to. And a require is specified by the require keyword. And then inside the brackets, you specify the condition. So in our case, our condition is exactly this. We want to know if the message.value is greater or equal to one ether. And this will simply work the same as this if statement. So we can technically take this and this away. This means that if the condition here in the require statement is not met, it will simply stop the execution. And this is because in a require statement, this condition over here always needs to be true for it to continue the execution. If this turns out to be false, it will fail. We can leave it as it is, but optionally, if you put a comma, you can also specify a failure message. For if this were to be false, then we would get this as a printout to know where this failed. So now you have learned about the require statement as well as the revert statement. Now, when and where should you use these? Well, requires are great for simple tasks and to stop execution immediately. I mean, you can of course do this with an if else statement and just put a revert at the top as well. But reverts are more meant for if there's complex logic uh, coming before that. And if we need to revert all the changes that's been made, we can do that a very last if we need to. 
and where required, I usually like to use it at the beginning of my functions to make sure that the user's input is validated. So lastly, we are left with the assert statement. Now, where do we use the assert in our code? Well, asserts are brilliant to fact check actual function execution. They usually are not used for user input, but instead to make sure that your functions function as they're supposed to. So in our example, this delivered function would be a great place to test the execution of this line. So what we could do is say assert and then paste in the condition that we want to test. In this case, we need to make sure that this is equal and not set it, but equal to true. If this passes as expected, everything is fine, unless something really bad went wrong. And then this will kick off and we'll get this error. However, asserts are great for little bug checks throughout the code. And there you have it. Now you know how to use assert, require and revert throughout your code to make it a bit more efficient and that the code can stop execution and undo state changes when necessary.